Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, uh, hello, uh, welcome back. Moment, why moment? Because you see the first moment is essentially the mean, the second moment is the variance. So, essentially the, the goal of this work is to have the have uh, very good, as good as possible or as realistic as possible governing equations for the moment of the different uh, flow and the combustion properties of the different flow properties. So, we want to have a uh, have a governing equations for the uh, first moment of, uh, of velocity uh, which is essentially the this Rand's equations in Favre average form. We have a uh, now we want to have a moment uh, of a mean equation uh, or, or a governing equation for mean species um, uh, mass fraction uh, or we want to have a uh, governing equation for mean temperature. Okay. So, that is why this is called the moment moment methods for reactive scalars. Okay. So, once again what we can do is that uh, to uh, moment for moment methods what we can do is that we can just decompose this uh, reactive scalar variable into the Favre averaged uh, variable and the fluctuation term. Okay. This is the Favre average term, this is the fluctuation term. Now, if you average the previous equation in this manner and we introduce this Favre variables, what you will get is the following. On averaging the we get mean density okay temporal term convective term so here this uh, mean um, uh, the favre averaged uh, 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 reactive scalar variable is essentially transported uh, convected by the mean velocity and we have the mean velocity uh, mean density sitting in front and we have this thing. This is the species diffusion term or the reactive scalar diffusion term which contains species diffusion as well as uh, uh, thermal diffusion minus so, this term may or may be not important and this term does not really have a much of a problem as such. And now the fun starts. Okay. What is the problem of uh, averaging the reactive scalar? We will start here. So, this is one term. You see it is similar to Reynolds stress terms. It is a covariance of the velocity fluctuation and the reactive scalar fluctuation. This is not closed you have a governing equation or now you can even assume that we have a governing equations for for uh, uh, v uh, tilde uh, 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 because that comes from the momentum equation but uh, you don't have a governing equations for this okay uh, as we average once again as we average uh, xi tilde you uh, land up with this uh, equation for the covariance of v prime and xi prime okay but this is not not all the second problem is this one averaging the source term that is the it can be either the average of the heat release rate term or the average of the species production and consumption rate. Both of these two terms are 
are unclosed and require closure. And especially in context of combustion, this is the most difficult term to model. Okay. This is the most difficult term to uh, model. So, we can uh, write down. So, what, what is rho S i essentially S i is nothing but the density times a source term. Okay. So, that is what this S i is. So, averaging of that how do you do an averaging of that and why it is problematic? Because you will see soon that it involves lot, it involves the, it is also a non-linear term, it involves the and it involves like coupling between species and temperature through this, uh, through this uh, arrhenius rate. So, uh, how do you average that? that? That is actually the biggest problem. Okay. So, we will write it down itself because it is so important that modeling the mean chemical source term is the most difficult problem in the moment methods in turbulent combustion. Where is the difficulty? Okay. The difficulty you will see soon. So, if these terms were closed, now you have a uh, governing equation which describes the mean velocity and you have a governing equation which describes the mean scalar. So, you have a governing equation which describes essentially mean species uh, uh, mass fractions and as well as the mean uh, temperature. Okay. So, those mean values we can at a point we can consider those to be available. So, mean species mass fraction is available, mean temperature is available. Will that be enough for us to uh, obtain the mean um, uh, of this uh, of this uh, uh, of this chemical source term? The answer is no. Why it is no? We will see. Okay. Now, so, consider uh, for a uh, lean uh, uh, mixture, uh, consider the heat release rate is given by source term is equal to rho times B times Y, but if you remember for premise combustion we had something like Y tilde is equal to T B tilde minus T tilde. So, now to just to remove the complexity when you introduce y tilde it essentially adds to the complexity because now you have to deal with uh, two different variables y as well as t. So, let us assume that our heat release term is now given by uh, by introduction of this it is now given exclusively in terms of temperature and it is this form. Okay. Whereas, uh, T b is the adiabatic flame temperature. Now, this is very important this this analysis is very important because this really tells you that why is turbulent combustion difficult? Why is closing this chemical source term or the obtaining the first moment of this chemical source term is so difficult? Okay, this is the this analysis clearly show, will show you that. Okay. So, what what the, how do you show that? So, now we can write T is essentially T double T tilde plus T double prime. 
Okay. So, this is the once again T we decompose uh, T into a far very averaged uh, variable T tilde plus the fluctuating variable T prime double prime. So, now we can consider this part itself and this part is given by E A by R T. So, we can write E A by R T as E A divided by R times T tilde plus T double tilde okay. and this can be written as E A by R T tilde 1 plus T double tilde by T tilde this we can write and then using binomial expansion an approximation for that we can write this as when this quantity is smaller than 1. Of course, T double prime tilde in turbulent flows it is normal to expect that your temperature can be very high 500 Kelvin, 500, 600 up to 1000 Kelvin, 1000, 2000 Kelvin and the temperature fluctuations are definitely smaller than the mean temperature. Okay. And we can consider that to be true and uh, if so, if not so this leads to even further complexity, but at least let us consider that. Okay. So, we can and this term this can be given by E A by R T tilde minus E A T double prime by R T tilde square. Okay. So, now if we put this into this equation and uh, write this also put uh, your uh, this thing in this also we get this is just algebra. No, see what you are trying. What we are trying to do here, we are trying to write uh, the heat release term in terms of average temperature, because uh, or favorable average temperature as a function of favorable average temperature. Because once we have that, your favorable average temperature can be uh, uh, there is a governing equation for favorable average temperature through that uh, equation for the n plus one -th equation for the uh, average reactive scalar equation. So if we can write it in terms of that, then this equation will be closed. If we can write it in terms of exclusively in terms of that, but can we do that? So, then we get rho b we can write this T b minus T tilde times exponential of minus E a by R T tilde we can separate this out times 1 minus T double tilde times T b minus T tilde times e to the power of E a by T double tilde times R T tilde square. Okay. So, this whole part we can write this essentially as, as T tilde as the heat release rate at the average temperature okay, this whole thing. So, this is the heat release rate term at a particular temperature and that is equal to the heat release rate term at the average temperature, but that is not enough. You have got more terms which are these. So, this term itself might be this term itself might be 
the heat release rate at average temperature. But this has, has, has uh, more terms in this, this can be positive or negative, but this is definitely positive, right. And this is actually also positive because 1 minus T double prime divided by t, this is definitely smaller than T B at a flame temperature and this is much smaller. So, this is always less than 1. So, this is this is, uh, is positive. Of course, this is positive. So, the heat release rate is always positive. Uh, this term is always positive I am sorry. So, this term is always positive, this term is always positive and but this term can be greater than or uh, less than uh, 1 depending on the situation. But this term is strongly uh, is, it can contribute heavily to uh, this uh, this uh, to this uh, actual heat release rate over the heat release rate in terms of the mean temperature and this term is non trivial because you see it has got an exponential on that so it is an exponential of t double prime divided by t prime t tilde whereas t double prime by t tilde can be of the order of 0.1 to 0.3 okay so this creates a major uh, addition to the uh, to these things so to again write that we can write omega t at t is in not equal to omega t at t tilde that is even if you t know t tilde the mo and the most important thing is that even if you know t tilde you do not know the mean heat release rate you do not know the heat release rate at that uh, at, a, at a particular point even if you know t tilde because there are fluctuations also contribute to the heat release rate. So, this is essentially equal to 1 minus T double prime divided by T B minus T tilde times exponential of E A by T double prime R T tilde square. Okay. So, this additional contribution makes this source term or this mean S i term that arrived this is for the n plus 1 th term unclosed. Okay. So, and there is no direct model for this. So, how do you incorporate this in your analysis? So, even if you know mean t mean uh, temperature at a particular point that does not give you the mean heat release rate and as a result just doing the moment of methods will not give you the mean temperature itself because the mean temperature is once again coupled to the mean heat release rate. Okay. So, this is the problem of uh, turbulent combustion that the mean uh, that the source term because of its exponential behavior is unclosed and this temperature fluctuations causes a non negligible and uh, uh, non negligible uh, contribution on the uh, heat release term when it is written in terms of the mean temperature. So, this is uh, a major problem and if you go back to this. So, this was this is the problem we now understand that if we consider this uh, average uh, this average uh, transport equation for the, um, for the for the reactive scalar this is one point where the problem comes. Okay. Uh, but we will now next take up that wh why this is also problematic and uh, so we will see what can be done to alleviate these problems. And then we will take up uh, simplified models which can be used to basically model these source terms and model these terms. So, uh, that is uh, will be taken up in the in the next class. So, this is the problem for the uh, closing the heat release rate term in terms of mean temperature. So, next we will take up the uh, problem of basically the turbulent transport by the the no, the, uh, the 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 we will take up the dissipation and scalar transport of the non reacting and linearly reacting species. So, till then goodbye.